Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast number 87 from down here at Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. I'm Michael Sorg. Chachi is on assignment. Uh, back with us this week, though, is Rob De La Creta. Hey. You look like you're also in a cold room. Uh, I'm not actually in a cold room. You, or, it, hang on, i got to find my camera. I have a lot of things open. All right, this is why I'm wearing a hat, okay? Okay. This is my... This is my hair for the month of February. Okay. <laughs> you may have seen I posted a picture earlier today because uh, let me let me do a little detail for you. Okay, so I have there are one, two, three, five, ten, fifteen. I have twenty days to build a whole lot of things that are very large that I can't talk about for one, two, three, four, five, six shows in March. Oh jeez. Four of those are happening at the exact same time. So this is a this is the heavy swing of your uh, season, huh? This is it's usually like uh, November ish or so, I'm told. Mm-hmm. But um, I have yet to see that. But yeah, it's just we we just got a whole bunch of stuff dumped on us, and all of our all of our clients like we gave them proposals six months ago, and they waited until this week to sign off on. Them. Nice, nice. So instead of being like, oh, I've got to build this thing and this thing and this thing, like one after another it's like no let's do all of the things at the same time <laughs> nice nice also returning to us after the drunken escapade that was the christmas show norm Hulesman from over at itwixie.com at mr derby how you doing i'm doing great thanks for having me back you know it wasn't that drunken it was just you know there's a little bit of eggnog it got worse later and trust spirits. me. it got yeah. worse on the wrestling <laughs> show trust me I trust you. And I'm also wearing a hat because I have extreme hat hair this evening as well. So <laughs> it's awesome. coming full circle. Awesome. And the newbie for tonight, Sean Graham is joining us. He's the uh, defender of small businesses, slayer of Walmart, according to Sonic Screwdriver here in the chat uh, from SeanGraham.me. How you doing tonight? Great. And I should be wearing a hat because uh, I have no hair. So I, of all the people <laughs> that probably should have a hat on right now, I should probably have a big, maybe a foam cowboy hat. Potentially. Perfect. That would be perfect. And of course, this is your awesome cast. You can find out more about what we're doing over at awesomecast.com. Contact us at contact at awesomecast.com, 724 25 cast That's 724-252-2278. Follow us on Twitter at awesomecast or uh, on our Facebook page, or we're also on Google Plus. So uh, you know, hit us up with any comments about tonight's show, past shows, any of that kind of stuff, or anything you think we should be talking about. Uh, we did get a little bit this week here, though, uh, from uh, our good friend WPAJ Juggalo John on Twitter. Um he, of course, we've been talking about sofa and the last sofa. It's not sofa. Uh, sofa. In, <laughs> we've see, been talking about yeah, that yeah, catch yeah, for like man. This, this warm, this warm weather. The the sinuses are all over the place, right? Uh, he says, "I heard uh, from uh, podcast RT um, that this the PCIPA could be the backdoor." Uh, for the sofa stuff, and there was a worry about this uh, about them just moving on into other legislation and this is the protecting children from internet pornographers act of 2011 uh so i yeah there's which is a great name and that why would wait wait can you say that name one more time you want that you want that again the protecting children from internet pornographers act of 2011 wow huh um because you put pornography and protecting children in a title and it goes right through right that's that's amazing can, can I sponsor the uh, Protecting Children from Big Yellow School Bus Act of 2012? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's basically it. And then, they, you know, and then the provisions that, you know, got everybody up in arms about SOPA is, is just gets, you know, written onto this as they're trying to pass it through. Um, and it was also introduced on it was introduced way back on May 25th by uh, Representative Lamar Smith, who was he's not he the one who got caught like violating the SOPA that he was trying to pass. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, we've talked about this too much, but the, the, the big, uh, overriding thing of all these bills is that, uh, as much as like, no matter how pro government you are, you can't really trust your, your politicians. Mm -hmm. So you should probably be taking a look at whatever it is they're doing. So you need to check for things when bills are going through and make sure that in the, uh, protecting children from uh, Big Yellow School Bus Act of 2012. Yeah. They're not trying to uh, 
give everybody floating cars. And, and these guys don't read these. I, there was a, a geez, I don't know what documentary I was, I was watching where it said, no, we don't read the bills. We just pass them. And like uh, Sonic says in the chat room here, uh, what center is going to vote against the Protecting Children from Pornography Act, you know? Yeah. Um, and then, uh, speaking of, uh, Sonic also sent us a picture in the email this week. Uh, if you're on the video, you can see it here. Uh, January 18th, uh, SOPA and PIPA had, according to uh, ProPublica.org, 80 supporters and 31 opponents. The next day, January 19th, 65 supporters and 101 opponents. That's what the blackouts did in all the response that everybody made that. It, yeah, you could actually, you could, uh, there were a couple websites that were keeping track of um, the the active position of representatives. And as the blackout day went on, it was like watching a bunch of lights turn off mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As, as they eventually like got the point or at least decided that they had pissed off enough people that it was time to shut up. That's tremendous. It's, it's, I, I, like we were saying last week, it's a great show of power for the Internet to mm -hmm. finally like unite on something like this. Uh, to protect itself, really. Yeah. Um, and uh, I don't know if you saw, but uh, I think Google published numbers on how many people they got to sign a petition that day. And it was something like uh, 40 million people or some stupidly huge number. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So everybody who said, like, oh, why would you black out? It's, it's pointless and nobody clicks these things. You can go talk to those 40 million people. Oh, wait, they have an stuff. infographic, it looks like. There it is. Yeah. Uh, it says 3 million plus here. I mean, this might be a different there you one. Go. But is that is this what you're looking for? Yeah, yeah, it was like four million people. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, did you see uh, Herpterpedia? Hmm. Herpterpedia. What's that? Herpterpedia was Twitter.com/slash Herpterpedia. It was a Twitter feed that was relaying all of the people who were really upset about Wikipedia being shut down for the day. And even though, if you went to Wikipedia.org, there was a very well written piece that explained what. You know, SOPA was, why they're doing the blackout, why this is important, what you should do. Basically, what would happen is your average 16-year-old would hop on Wikipedia to do their homework or whatever. And then they would get really <laughs> angry and really offensive on the Twitters and say, bleepity bleep, why the bleep is Wikipedia bleeping shut down? Or is Wikipedia going to be like this forever? Or what's happening? Yeah. Or I don't understand this blackout thing, which was all just really sad. Yeah. Well, what's amazing is I think Wikipedia was the only site that actually black totally blacked out that I was saw yeah. anyway. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it was funny, you know, going into that day, Google threatening to black out, which would have been awesome, it would have shut down America, right? But um, if they would have truly blacked out, but um, there's you know, or Facebook or something like that. But um, yeah, they were. I think they were the only site that really totally just disabled their service because even WordPress they disabled some of their like extra features, but you could still post your blog and all that kind of stuff. So it reminds me that regular people uh, use this stuff, you know, because after the comments like this, I, I, I haven't seen one here that doesn't have a, a swear word in it. Uh, yeah, they're all so all very angry. And very, all they had to do is read. Yeah, yeah. It's like, well, you know why? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pick up a book. You have a library, right? Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Forget the Internet. Go to a library. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, I, I believe in the resurgence of libraries, and that was maybe that helped them a little bit there. So, well, the other uh, big legal news, and this is getting interesting now. Now, Me Mega Upload, we talked about before how they got uh, shut down and raided and everything. Uh, so, this is all the fallout from that. Uh, I, I, for one, I have some clients that use Mega Upload to pass their files back and forth amongst them. So, that's a problem that's gone. Um, and I don't know if they have anything that's uh, they need to get back. But there's been a lot of talk the last few days, um, and the latest that I've seen here is uh, from over on TheVerge.com that Mega Upload user data is safe for two more weeks. Now, apparently, you know, like a lot of stuff today, it's being hosted, like Mega Upload's content is being hosted on, like, some other hosting provider. And uh, Mega Upload hasn't been wrong. Their assets are free frozen, and I believe, I believe the situation is the FBI has said, we have all we need, you can delete it. And the host, uh, you know, isn't getting paid, so, you know, they don't need to keep it up. Uh, but there's a lot of legitimate users of Mega Upload that could be losing some vital information here. Although they probably should have backed up that stuff uh, locally. Yeah, I mean, you know, like we always say, if you're not, uh, what's the, the three, two, one rule? Three different places, two different types of uh, media? Mm -hmm. Something, something. Yeah. If, well, if you're trusting... Story, why do they get shut down? What's that? 
Were they just were they illegally uh, hosting files, or what was the deal? Uh, well, the story is that uh, they, the FBI, and uh, whoever, uh, whatever a- other agencies were involved, uh, built a case uh, that they were, you know, knowingly using it for piracy, harboring uh, terrorists, harboring terrorists, you know, whatever that is, uh, and they uh, they raided the compound of a couple of the owners down in New Zealand. So, um, hmm. did, did, yeah, the idea I, was that they were basically. Um, uh, acting as a uh, as an assisting party to those who were um, infringing upon copyright and intellectual property laws. One, one quote from a chat was, uh, "We it was something along the lines of we're not we're not pirating. We're like the uh, the, the shippers for the middlemen for the pirates." You know. Yeah, I mean, which is the same argument as a lot of. Like, <laughs> Sean, were you sites. saying something there? Yeah, I think I heard too that they they had to pull Kim dot com out of uh, his secret bunker or something that <laughs> they literally had. To- had pull him out somewhere where he's hiding i think it was a panic room yeah yeah it was a panic room (laughs) (laughs) so i mean he knew he knew it was coming uh so but i mean this is an issue because it was used you know for all the you know other stuff that was on there there were a lot of people that legitimately use this you know every time i log into my pc side of my macbook there's still that little mega upload uploader because that's the only place i could use it for this client you know um, so, I mean, it was, it was just like a you send it or something for a lot of people. Uh, and now they're getting stuck with it cause, uh, you know, they, because th- it got shut down for everything else going on. So then is this going to make people that were using mega upload a little more concerned about what they're using for their, uh, their file sending service as they should be. There you go. <laughs> because now the FBI has everything that you has access to everything that you put up there. You know, are other pirates going to call from this that they're going to track back or, uh, you know, whatever else might be on there? Who knows? Because how many people use this thing? Yeah, I mean, just like whenever they took down whenever they took down uh, oink.me.uk or whatever it was. um, And whenever they take down any large file sharing site, they take a list of all the users. And Mm -hmm. as a user who is not anonymizing yourself, you're at risk. So there's two ways to look at this. Uh, wait, well, there's more than two ways, actually. Uh, okay, way number one, anonymize yourself and use the internet intelligently. Uh, or don't have a reason to anonymize yourself and don't share pirated illegal content mm-hmm. and make sure that nobody passes bills that make it really difficult to figure out what that line may or may not be. Mm-hmm. Um, or just be really smart about the services that you use. Exactly. I mean, if you were using Mega Upload to host like your your, you know... Your important family documents, you were not using the internet correctly. <laughs> <laughs> That's like there are there are many better sources to be using. Than yeah, that. yeah. As opposed to like I know I put a lot of important stuff in Dropbox nowadays and that's at least on every computer plus on online. So I feel there's a little bit of a redundancy there. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, the other interesting side of this is that the FBI is used mega upload Skype conversations to build its case. Huh. Apparently, uh, they use private Skype IM conversations that were intercepted as a basis uh, uh, for its case against Mega Upload. It wasn't clear uh, is how exactly the FBI acquired these conversations. Another speculation that Skype may be holding uh, your uh, messaging conversations uh, a bit longer than people expected. Do you guys hear that weird buzzing in, in, the, <laughs> in the feed? Uh, no. I gotta go. Is somebody, what's that clicking sound? Clicking, that tapping noise. They're listening right now, and they're really upset. Oh, uh, no. There, there, there's a white van out front. that I don't know what they're doing out there, so maybe I should uh, close the eyes. <laughs> exactly. I, you know, I, I'm sure they've been following my house for, for years because of all the weird crap we've done on the other podcasts. Uh, but other than that, um, yeah, man, you ever think about the Skype wiretapping, huh? Uh, I mean, I, this is more about the IM conversations, but still, I mean, it's a possibility because this is being, uh, I mean, Skype is a peer to peer thing. Anybody could be intercepting that. I don't know how they, they, you know, lock down those packets that you're not, Yeah. you know, I don't know how the technology works with Skype, but. You know, it's not too outside the the realm to think that somebody could be picking this up. And how many people are using Skype as, you know, again, you know, they're just talking about the IM that they intercepted here. But, you know, that people use this as their phone, co- their phone in some yeah, cases. You know, you know, we've talked a lot about how uh, people don't you don't think about these things when you use them. Like, you know, when the telephone was first invented, very few people were thinking like, oh, well, what if somebody could tap into the middle of this and listen to what I'm saying? Well, there's always the party line when it first started. 
Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just pick up the phone and listen in. And no, I'm not uh, you know, I haven't had any. I haven't heard anybody have the conversation about what's happening to iMessages. Mm-hmm. What was that? I wasn't familiar with uh, this whole party line thing. Is it? I've never heard of it. No, he was, uh, I, I know we had one. Like my sister's about t- uh, ten years older than I am, and she remembers it. Uh, I, I don't know if it was something that happened in the cities, but I know, like out in the out in the middle of nowhere, uh, you would have a party line that was like several houses, basically several places, basically shared a line. I think somebody older and wiser than me, please correct me on this. Uh, and basically, you shared a line because that's the way they could network it back then. Uh, like a couple of apartments would have the same phone. Yeah, or something like that. that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. So, uh, because I, I, I don't think they had the capacity back then, and that's how they—that was one solution for them in expansion originally. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much what it was. It was uh, well, it was before World War II. Like uh, most residential phone lines were all party lines, and it was in the similar way that when you have a cable connection like you share that connection with all of your neighbors which goes to a substation which goes to a much larger pipeline same sort of thing except telephones are a lot dumber so if you pick up the phone and your neighbor picks up the phone and then the other neighbor picks up the phone it's like the biggest conference call ever yeah what we should just we should just run skype as a party line that's it (laughs) isn't that what google hangout is that's true (laughs) yeah yeah that's exactly what it is yeah it's a party line where you can insert porn randomly Ugh. um yeah well, I mean, what's the legal issue? I mean, or ramifications there? Because I know there you can't, uh, you know, pre Patriot Act, right? You could you couldn't record someone without their knowledge, uh, mm-hmm. or you couldn't. You had rights when you used the telephone. Yeah, uh, is the same thing true for Skype? I, I use the internet. We're my, gathering data. You know, if you is, are, 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 you know, what are those terms of service say? Can Skype just hit record on this conversation and you know grab snippets of it and? No one's the wiser, or is it completely legal? I, I don't even know, actually, because it's the internet. Yeah, it, I, it's probably a matter that like FBI came to Skype and said we want to do this, and it's up to Skype to say yes or no, um, or get a warrant and and who knows? Because I mean, I don't know where that falls under. You know, does that fall under normal wiretapping laws at this point, or because it is new technology, is it completely wide open? And all they have to do is ask, you know. And, and also consider Skype is, well, they were owned by, well, they've been working on this for, it looks like, a couple years. So at some point they were owned by eBay. Now they're owned by Microsoft. So is it go, does it go above the Skype people out in, where are they from, Sweden or something um, at that point? So I, I don't know. I, it, it's probably it's probably just that they they had an agreement with the FBI for a case like this. Well, you know, Microsoft owns Skype. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, what, what's Microsoft's uh, policy on something like this? Are they are they following your Hotmail account? You know, actually, haven't there been issues where uh, Hotmail accounts have been used in cases? Sure. I mean, it has to have been by now. Um, I, I, I think any of that stuff can be subpoenaed at a certain point. So, um, but other than that, uh, let's see, if, 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 while we're on the illegal things, Rovio CEO says piracy can attract more fans to Angry Birds. Hmm. So I mean, we you know we've been talking about piracy and 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 everybody trying to demolish it on the internet these days. Um, he basically breaks it down that uh, you know to stop treating the customers as users, start treating them as fans. We do that today. We talk about how many fans we have. I mean. You know, uh, there's got to be a, a smattering of Angry Birds plush toys that are not licensed at this point. You know, but it gives an awareness for them, and maybe they're they're uh, you know a little more open minded about it. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, uh, uh, there's there's some awesome name for what I want to call this situation, but it's basically <laughs> like <laughs> so. Let's say you make this really cool application, and it happens to be uh, you know pretty uh, addictive. And uh, a whole amazing number of people download this thing. Mm-hmm. You're probably going to be pretty casual about the way you talk about piracy. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you are the guy that makes like a niche app that sells to 20 people a year, you are not going to be having this conversation at all. Exactly, exactly. It, it, they're doing well with it, and anything anything out there is more brand recognition for them. And, and exactly, somebody in China could rip off an angry Angry Birds doll. Mm-hmm. And make literally like four million dollars, mm-hmm. and it would not be a chip in their armor. 
Uh, according to this article on The Verge, apparently they're uh, looking to do uh, use the Angry Birds brand with some music tie-ins. So it's curious what what their uh, you know lax piracy stance is going to do in the future here as they deal with the music companies. So could be interesting. Hey, we're already dealing with the movie company with the uh, Rio tie-in that they did this year. So it was just a promotion. I was so disappointed about with that. By the way, really, uh, <laughs> there were no Angry Birds. Did any of you guys see it? Yeah, yeah, I saw it. Yeah, I never saw the movie. You never saw it? Never saw the movie. Bought the game. Didn't buy, didn't see the movie yet. So I was so pumped to see little, these little, like literally the Angry Birds in the movie Rio. I thought it was such like, a cool idea. No, it was just, it's a Pixar movie that as they were getting ready to market, they had developed for years. And as they were getting ready to market it, they were like, oh, look at this cool app that everybody loves called Angry Birds. Oh, our movie happens to be all about birds. Let's just pretend that they're together. <laughs> Have Rio develop this other game. All you know within the world of the movie, and yeah, there weren't even any Angry Birds like little short videos in the preview, which I was so disappointed. So, um, so yeah, I was let down. And if I would have been a twelve year old kid or a tween, yeah, I would, my heart would have been crushed. <laughs> As if it wasn't already, I I cried on the inside. Yeah, it was a good movie. That was funny. It's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, Apple uh, is this, this is interesting. Um, Apple has been. Um, giving out some stuff to their, making some changes and some public comments that makes you wonder if this is a new regime or not, you know, uh, if this would have happened under Steve. Uh, Apple is giving employees $500, $500 off Macs and $250 off iPads come June. Hmm. Apparently, Apple has never had an employee discount. Good for them. How many companies? How many companies can say that? But they've given away products, I think, before too. I mean, I think when the iPhone first came out, a lot of their employees, I think app, at least Apple Store employees, got got iPhones. Did they? Um, I I knew a couple of people who worked in Apple stores, and they had iPhones right away. And and maybe they weren't gifted, but I got. I, I want to remember that. I I think that that's what happened. Mm-hmm. Well, that's pretty. So. That's a pretty serious uh, uh, discount there. Uh, Five hundred dollars off a MacBook Air. I mean, that's that's half price. Uh, oh, oh, here we go. Remember, the employees currently receive twenty percent off Macs, uh, but the five hundred dollar MacBook Air is uh, is pretty, pretty, pretty a lot bigger. So I mean, yeah, they probably got discounts there in the Apple stores. Uh, but that's uh, th- that's pretty nice that they're doing that. And also, they've been very public about uh, what's been going on in China. Of course, the big Foxconn controversy going on right now. Uh, about the human right val- violations and everything, um, to the point where Tim Cook released a letter, open letter to the staff. Uh, that, that I think it was the New York Times was doing a uh, line of uh, 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 stories about what's going on over there, and uh, it, it was very open to what's uh, you know that that you know these conditions were not a part of what uh, you know that they they care about what's going on over there, so. But, um, and other than that, Apple also released Final Cut X updates. Have you downloaded it yet, Rob? Have you played with that? I, uh, <laughs> I have not had the chance. I haven't, myself. I haven't touched Final Cut X since like the month it came out. Oh, it's, uh, it, this looks like it's about everything that everybody's been asking for. It brings in multi-cam support, broadcast monitoring, uh, bro- broadcast monitors. Uh, I'm, pretty excited about the monte cam myself also you can reattach the the broken media in your in your pro in your uh project well, that's kind of a big deal that's a huge deal you know how many projects i've had to almost start over because something got detached um I, i've pretty hardcore uh switched over since the beginning of uh well since since they released that trial uh, a few months ago, so I was gonna say, weren't you a pretty big fan of it? Oh, I am. I have been. I mean, it's got its problems, and that was like a number one problem was the uh, was was the issues. Also, there is a ten dollar app called Seven Two X that will convert legacy final tr- pro- excuse me Final Cut Pro projects into the latest and great the latest format, according to the story over here on the gadget. Um, yeah, that's going to be the where was this stuff at the beginning? You know, what I mean. Um, so I, th- I think Apple really missed the boat with a lot of that stuff. But now it's, it seems like more of an option that I think a lot of video houses may go for now that they do have that support. So, uh, but um, but I don't know. It, 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 it took them a few months to get there. So, 
Let's see also we got here. Also, T-Mobile brings Square to select small businesses. Uh, maybe you got something. Uh, Sean, have you been dealing with a lot of uh, uh, s s businesses that are operating on Square? Uh, not yet. Not yet. But, um, you know, we'll see. But nothing uh, nothing real big right now. Mm -hmm. The uh, The Obama campaign is also uh, using Square. What, for donations? Yes. That's tremendous. <laughs> That's kind of a big thing. It's actually uh, uh, Obama and Romney. I'm just going to – I know a little bit about it, so I'm going to grab a story real quick. Okay. Uh, they will be using the Square iOS payment dongle to process campaign donations uh, during canvassing ex yeah, efforts. So sort of like when they knock on your door and say, hey, do you want to support the campaign? They can swipe your card and take your money right there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they, they had the Salvation Army thing. I didn't. I never saw anybody with a bell with the Square, though, because I, I didn't really look. But uh, uh, it's been getting out there. Uh, I guess T-Mobile is going to offer them um, in-store and uh, allow you to... Allow you to finish your your process uh, checking out a T Mobile store uh, on the smartphones with with it. So uh, I'm really interested to see if um, Square is going to start using if they could take this effort that they're using um, with the Obama campaign and that kind of thing, and if they could make it work for nonprofits to take donations, that mm -hmm. would be a, a huge deal. That would be. I I, I don't know. There, there's really not much um, that keeps you from doing it because all it does is put everything into like square brings in the money and then you set up a bank account you know aside from that so if you have like a nonprofit bank account i don't see is there is there anything that would be stopping you from that you have to specify your type of business and that kind of thing for, um and i think for tax purposes there would have to be a system in place okay that's me that's me guessing pretty much but okay okay but yeah but from it, it looks like it's pretty open-ended for it though um what does the actual credit card processing need to like at that at that point need to be no it's the way that you forward? report your income oh okay then and that i have a nonprofit, so i should know these things but um <laughs> and that but case, for instance well, like if uh if uh, an organization wants to set up a paypal account as a nonprofit, yeah you have to set up a paypal account that is specifically made for a nonprofit. Okay, if from from using this with our cafe and with uh, my own business, it, I think it's pretty open ended. That if, as long as you direct this to a nonprofit specified bank account, I don't think there's any issues with it. Yeah. Um, so uh, I think it's. I mean, look at what Salvation Army's already been doing with it. So um, I actually had an experience with it this past weekend. I started using it. Uh, checking out DVDs, uh, I took over a DVD production for a local wrestling uh, group, and over half of the uh, orders were on Square. So that's pretty tremendous, and and I think people bought more because of it. It, it really kind of opens it up for a lot of people there, uh, especially in an environment like that when you're at like a gymnasium where this wrestling event is, and there's no ATM, and you see you know whatever and uh, you know and and whatever sale we have going on, and you want to get more. Um, so it, it's, it's really working out for us so far. It worked out great with the cafe when we were running it too. So do they know the square charge per transaction or is it like a, mer like a typical merchant services where you just pay flat fees? No, it's, How uh, does... it's per transaction. It's a percentage per transaction. Oh, it's a percentage. Yeah. Okay. They, they used to have also a 10 cent fee, I believe on top of that, but they had canceled it out about the time when we started using it last year. Right, which now makes them cheaper. I think it's it, depending on how many transactions you have, but mm -hmm. in the long run, for most people, it'll make it cheaper than using uh, PayPal's merchant services for to small take for small businesses. It's tremendous. Uh, yeah. I don't know how many credit card companies came in and uh, were trying to sell us their wares, and I told them what we paid on that, and they just couldn't even uh, come close to it. Yep. You know, um, I I, th I told him to try. He's like, show me something cheaper, and we might consider it. And it just nobody had a, had a chance at it. There was there's too many upfront fees with it. So uh, and that's something I wish I would have had when uh, I was on college campuses when my book came out. And and you know, students just don't carry money anymore. So I think that would have been really mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. helpful back then to be able to to you know sell my book on campus. I've been do, doing presentations. And, um, you know, people just weren't carrying cash on college campuses. So I think it, it really does open up so many doors, especially for small businesses. So mm -hmm. really cool. Well, even, even just money swapping, because I think uh, uh, when we were doing the team this year or last, uh, you know, you had to give your money for getting your shirt and everything for the season. And uh, they said, oh, yeah, show up. I'll have Square and I'll take your money that way. You know, it, it just it just an easier accessibility for that for just anybody because anybody can open an account. 
and just just have it. I was sitting on mine for probably about three years before I finally found like a use for it with these with these uh, DVD boosts that I'm doing now. So you know who could really benefit from this? Hand handlers. You just you know sit there, shake your cup, but you know you get the square. Well, I was out. I was actually going to say there's been a few things in the news that uh, homeless folks are starting to use square. <laughs> yeah, I'm not kidding. There's a uh, there's a few videos about guys and, who say that like they've legitimately been able to increase their income as a result of Square because you know whether or not you want to give the mon- bub money is a whole different discussion. But the fact of the matter is, like you know, but, I know but, a guy walks up to me. He's like, "Hey, I may change." I'm like, ah, "I only carry cards. That is no longer an excuse." Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> that was always my excuse. Um, Wow, that's wow. So, what are you the the, the panhandler is using it? What where the hell did he get a cell phone? Well, you know, you pay know? as you go, I guess. I guess so. I guess so. Well, it's, it's Android as well, so you can get those for pretty cheap these days. So, you know, this is also the closest we've ever come uh, in in our techno- technological advances to being like close to the Back to the Future, where you can thumb a hundred bucks for the clock tower and you can swipe it up. So. We're getting there. We're getting close. Almost there. Almost there. The NFC is next. I'm already. <laughs> I'm already loving the swipe thing because I have like. I, I don't know why they only gave it to me in one of my credit cards, but PNC gave me this card that like you know you go into the uh, the sheets and you just swipe the card like up it's against got a their thing. pay wave as well. Yeah, the pay wave exactly. Uh, but they always apparently nobody. I'm the only one that uses it because anytime I use it, they're startled by it. And don't understand why I didn't hand them anything, or the the connector for the the the, the pad for it is hidden behind like some lighters or something, so yeah. it hasn't been working out too well. But Do you ever just like wave your hand Jedi style like with your card? And not yet. Palm, not yet. And you're like, I will pay pay you, whatever. There we go. Pay. <laughs> All right, I'm trying way too hard. All right, try it sometime, and then like we have Missy recording do it and. Wear a hood or something, or get, do get Chachi to do it. It would be uh, don't don't wear a hood. <laughs> no, not to the gas station. No, maybe we'll try at the McDonald's or something. Um, that uh, that could also be bad in my neighborhood. Uh, anyways, uh, but no, it, it's I, yeah, it's 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 pretty nice. Uh, but uh, Square is changing everything. I, I didn't know about about the uh, about the campaigns doing that as well. That's interesting. So, uh, well, hey, uh, what? Well, you know, Obama's on Instagram. Did, Obama had a uh, Google Hangout the other night, didn't he? That's what I heard. I didn't see it, but I heard about it. I, I was seeing a lot of tweets or something about that. Let me see if I can pull anything up here. So I think he's one of the brands on there, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, you know, he was he was the one that really got into social media the last time around. It'll be interesting how he utilizes things uh, for this election. Well, there's his there's his uh, Google Plus page doing as everybody does with his, their pictures up there. Um, I don't. Yeah, here he is. Here he is hanging out. They actually got a video up from it. Interview with the president, 2012. How do you how do you keep this from uh, getting bad? You know what I mean? <laughs> Oh, well, I'm sure that they had some security with Google making sure that that didn't happen. Well, they, well, they, they do say that there's a lot more tools going on um, for for kind of higher-end producers. Now, was anybody just allowed to join this? I mean, I can see how anybody could just watch it, but mm-hmm. could anybody jump in the Hangout? I mean, I'm sure there was a restriction about well, who looks, they were able it to It looks like in, they're right? providing some questions uh, via YouTube here. Uh, there is, let's see if this video thing pops down. You can see uh, at the bottom, I'll see if this goes full screen. Um, yeah, that, there's a hangout. There's people. This guy looks pretty official down here. Maybe it was a very selective group that they let in here. Because, I, I, yeah, I really can't imagine they let just anybody. Maybe it was invite only. Are you in, are you in the president's preferred circle? And holy crap, is that great quality on that hangout? Yeah. So... I'm, There's I'm, four Barack Obamas, five, six, seven. I'm sure there's more, ten. Yeah, I, I'm, lo- I'm looking on uh, Instagram right now. How do I know which one is the real, real Barack <laughs> yeah, Obama? Yeah, I guess they don't have a verified, do they? Nope. That's unfortunate. I don't think he's just Obama. I'm going to unfollow that one. Donald Trump will get to the bottom of it. Yeah, he will. <laughs> yeah, well, where's Donald Trump's Instagram? I'm sure that would be amazing. Uh, here, here we got one uh, posted from the Huffington Post. There it is. I, th- I think this is the one we showed before. I, it's, <laughs> of course, it's all president it pictures of the president, so it's not by the president. Um, 
You never know. Maybe he's doing a 365. But anyways. Oh, boy. This will be a this will be a fun election. Uh, you, you think uh, Newt Gingrich is going to get in the social media at all? Oh, sure. Yeah. 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 They're Somebody, all going to try. Oh, wait. Isn't really? he the one? Isn't he the one that had all the Twitter followers that were fake? I don't know. I think we were reporting uh, sometime last year. He was like the most followed uh, Twitter of all the candidates. Yeah, it didn't work out too well. All right, what else we got here? Uh, Apple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're best the- show ever. Keep going. <laughs> all right, Hulu. What else we got? It's it's been a slow week. I mean, it has been a slow week. Last week was a slow week too. Uh, so we're 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 rolling around around with it. Um, so Jason Killer, Killer Kyler, Killer one K- one L K- Kyler. I'm going with, he's a killer. I don't know. <laughs> Focus. Uh, he says focusing only on the end user is a cop out. Uh, he was talking uh, at the Dive in the Media conference. Um, he says that there are actually four categories of customers: team team members, end users, advertisers, and content partners. So, uh, as I said here, it's nice for, nice for him to include Hulu's own employees there for uh, their customers. Uh, so, that gives you a little idea what their focus is. But it makes sense, because they're dealing with a lot of really, uh, you know, caustic partners there, you know, especially with the the, uh, the content providers. So, Yeah, definitely. I've always given Hulu a lot of credit for what they were able to pull together because, you know, they've they've got all of this media from all these different sources and they somehow made it work when, you know, everybody at that time, you know, when they first kind of broke into the scene was trying to do that in some way. So they got it done. They made all those um, partnerships work. So I've always had a respect for their ability to just get that part done. So it makes sense to me that they would say something like that. So Mm -hmm. it's interesting what what he meant about employees, I I guess. Maybe there's some some something else there that they have behind the scenes that you know, normal users don't get to see. So exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, I know I, I use it a good bit here, um, and it, it is annoying. More stuff's getting on there. You're definitely seeing a little bit more a bigger rise in, in content. You know, um, all the new stuff that came out that I was interested in. Or maybe it's it, just the stuff I was interested in. And the God, the British stuff that I'm getting into because of it uh, mm-hmm. is, is, is pretty cool. So, I, you know, I checked out Hulu Plus recently and I was really disappointed that you still have so many ads. And I think you have just as many oh, it's ads getting worse. when you subscribe. Yeah. You think it's worse. It's Well, if you're if you're watching on Xbox, it's way worse. Because I, I watched on Xbox and then watched a couple episodes of something on uh, on an iPad or on the web and, and you'll get one commercial and sometimes you get two... Once in a while, three commercials on the Xbox. Wow. So maybe yeah, I couldn't believe it. And I thought that that was, and I guess I was just assuming I didn't read the terms of having Hulu Plus, but yeah, I thought you would have less ads. That's typically an expectation, but I, I was wrong there. Yeah, it's, it's not about paying for getting less ads. It's, talk about, it, it's about paying for the access with Hulu, it, is their play on it. Uh, versus Netflix is very all you can eat, of course. Uh, but the, uh, but honestly, I'm still kind of, and also you see a lot of crossover. Like you know, all of Boss is available on Hulu. I think it's all available on Netflix too. It's just knowing that, so I can say, oh, I can watch it here without commercials. Um, but it fills in all the blanks by by having both of those for me in the long run. You know, because now I can go watch like How I Met Your Mother, which has like never been on Hulu, uh, but I can go catch up with it on Netflix now. So, not that I'm getting new episodes, uh, but still, I'm patient at least. Um, so, um, all right. So, anything else going on this week, guys? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is rough. Um, I don't know. Man. Well, Josh uh, and Rachel are launching their haiku book. Uh, what is it? tomorrow night? Is oh, yeah, yeah. first night for Monster Haiku by uh you know uh by josh sager rachel Ra- josh josh is kind of their media guy he's doing their website and um, other graphics rachel and uh will rutherford dj lunchbox uh the wrestling mayhem show mm-hmm. uh he writes these haikus right so he started writing haikus um off on his own he would get images of you know darth vader you know or you know some some other interesting fantasy illustration and then just write a haiku about it and it was you know interesting interesting content so i guess a couple of years ago, or last year, they Josh and Rachel teamed up. I'm sorry, not Josh. Rachel and Will teamed up, where Rachel, it was called Monster Haiku, and Rachel did these illustrations of monsters, just in general, and then Will would write a haiku. 
and there were a hundred of them. And now I guess they're they're getting back uh, together to to write. A, they have written this book uh, uh, of haikus and uh, more illustrated scenes of monsters. Uh, and the book's called Monster IQ, so it's I think the next step for the project. And um, what's interesting is, um, a portion of the profits are going to March of Dimes, and um, I was talking with them about it uh, over the weekend, and it's uh, really exciting because um, you know this is their first you know book project, and I know Rachel's like super super jazzed about it. So um, we're going to try to have them on uh, an evening with PodCamp coming up soon mm-hmm. as well. We haven't picked uh, we haven't finalized our location for that but we'll get them in a in one of those events soon so i know i'm excited about it i sound like i know all about it right because i'm pitching mm-hmm. this whole thing but um yeah the book costs 25 dollars, and tomorrow's the first day you can go, it can go on sale and there's a limited time frame to buy your copy so um so if you're out there and you're a fan of rachel's work or will's work make sure you get a copy and they're also scheduled to be uh joining us here i think so i'm in the studio uh on awesome cast so we're going to be talking oh, about that here as well. So uh, we're doing a whole book tour. It's like you it's know, a, yeah, it is a book tour. You know, we should uh, get them booked at the local library as well. You know, <laughs> so uh, but no, something it's like, else. Uh, <clears throat> we were saying something, Mike. I've got a story no. Go go for it there. Okay, um, something I, I came across this week. I wanted to mention. Uh, you know how we talk about malware and all that on Android devices. Did you uh, did you see that S- uh, Symantec uh, identified thirteen applications in the Android market? Did you see that? No, no. What is this? Yeah, uh, combined download figures of over five million. Uh, Symantec identified what they call Android dot counterclank, which is a Trojan. Um, it is they classify it as a super low risk, um, but it will do 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 do. do. Can write your browser's history and bookmarks. Can you use this to erase or modify your browser's data? Um, which, you know, is a vague way of saying it could do a lot of things that nobody really has seen. Uh, so, an aggressive form of an ad network. So you know, it's still falling under ad uh, uh, spyware. Not spyware. Adware. I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't had a PC in a long time. I haven't had to deal with this in ages. <laughs> um, but yeah, it all goes back to adware. But the funny thing that they point out you know, is that there are 13 applications currently in the Android market. And these aren't in like one of the third-party markets that you can get Android apps from. These are from the Google market. That this, you these are haven't. approved applications. Yeah, these are approved applications that have been proved to be malicious, like ad- genuinely malicious. Just They're mm-hmm. just for kicks. Yeah. To kind of screw with you and serve you ads so somebody can make a lot of money in their concrete bunker. Oh, well, what I say is going to be your Android phone is the next PC, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, hey, story that Juggalo John reminded me of here. Did you hear about the um, the uh, a couple of Irish guys that were uh, tweeting on their way over to hang out in the U.S. and it got them kicked out of the country? No. This is pretty interesting. Apparently, on their on their way over, uh, they were saying things like, we're going to destroy that town, uh, th- destroy yeah. the U.S. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to bring up the tweets here. But, uh, but yeah, they showed up. Somebody thought it wasn't funny. And uh, they held them for a few hours and sent them back. <laughs> That's appropriate. That's fine. Okay. Oh, here they are. And they were... Uh, 26 year old Irishman and a, and they don't say who the other one was. Um, let's see. In one tweet, they quoted an episode of the U S comedy series, family guy saying three weeks today, we're totally up in LA pissing people off in Hollywood Boulevard and digging Marilyn Monroe up. (laughs) That's fantastic. Wow. Um, so yeah, don't tweet on your way here. Uh, so, so Homeland Security is keeping an eye on that kind of stuff. Oh, well, yeah. how, how do they track it down from that? Uh, they just the way is, does somebody have a flag has a has a Twitter search for for destroying and they they happen to 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 tag uh, uh, Irishman twenty six here uh, back through Twitter on his way over in well, the plane. So a lot of people joke about how like you know you can't type bomb on the internet because somebody's watching. Mm-hmm. It's not really a joke because it's mostly true. Because somebody has a search for bomb out there on Twitter. <laughs> there, and they there work are for the government. That, uh, specifically, Homeland Security pays a lot of people uh, to do things like keep an eye on this sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And 
the, I don't know. Anyway, so by going after this guy who apparently was just, you know, a little crazy, um, they sort of like, so say that you are considering actually doing something and you hear that this guy got caught from talking about it on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Does that make you less likely to talk about it on Twitter, which makes you slightly less likely to get caught? I'm just throwing things out there at this point. but <laughs> Well, you know, John Carter and I used to joke about blowing each other up. Like, he would talk about planning a bomb in my car, and I don't think anyone would ever you know, track him down at. I mean, this was the early days of Twitter, but still, you know, <laughs> now, that, now that I'm thinking back. But I don't know. I'm, I, I, I imagine that someone saw it, you know, like, like my, let's say my mom saw it and was like, "Oh my gosh, my daughter's flying this week. I don't know. I don't want her. She's going to be in that town. I don't know who these guys are." So she could report it somewhere or call the yeah, police. Yeah, it's certainly possible. Did you see Twitter? So that, that's what I would imagine happened over, over the internet or the, over the FBI scouring every tweet. Yeah, because also the FBI, should, they, they it's not necessarily that they scour, but they do collect data on what is being talked about by whom, where, and when on the internet. But they also have pretty important things to look after, like legitimate safety concerns, so does Homeland Security. So it is not in their best interest to go after someone who's quoting Family Guy on the internet. No, no, definitely yeah. not. Yeah, uh, and hopefully, hopefully, they have the resources to figure out that that's all that he's doing. And <laughs> Juggler John, uh, well, he he sent a uh, a video where a uh, news video where they talked about this, and apparently, also in that, there's uh, uh, two people that broke into the CNN news office and then checked on their Facebooks on the computers. <laughs> yeah. Um, in other news, uh, did you guys talk about? Um, Apple's quarterly reports last week by any chance? No, no, no. Chachi's not much of a numbers guy. I figured. Uh, so in the neighborhood of funny numbers, I'm going to paraphrase a TechCrunch article because it's really just a whole lot of numbers, but it'll kind of blow your mind. So uh, <coughs> back in October, um, people called it a rare miss by Apple because they miss um, analyst predictions uh, that pointed to the uh, potential of a $40 billion quarter. Uh, a lot of people thought it was insane uh, because Apple had never even had a $30 billion quarter before. But it turns out um, that on top of those predictions, all of them were really low mm-hmm. because Apple managed to pull off a $46.33 billion quarter. Jeez. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, like, they had, like, like I said, they had never even had a $30 billion quarter before. Mm-hmm. So a quarter on top of quarter profit uh, of uh, or increase in in profit of uh, that's sixteen point three three billion dollars. Assuming that they were close to thirty billion, which I don't think they were. Billion, billion, um, billion. And early projections of thirty four million iPhones sold. Uh, actual sold thirty seven million. Uh, the and, people at TechCrunch are snarky, and they said, "But hey, Android's winning, right?" Uh, <laughs> and that includes everything. Like that includes like the three GSs you get for free on AT and T now, probably, right? Yeah, I think so. So I mean, um, it has to. It's all running iOS five. It's that's that's it counts. Oh, for yeah, other numbers, included, uh, fifteen. Um, you know, AT and T and and all the criminals who they assist in stealing your iPhone and yeah. not helping you get it back, so they yeah. force you to buy another iPhone. Oh, what? What? Whatever happens to people, somebody's bitter. What? That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I may or may not know someone that that happened to, but oh, some man. somebody who literally had their phone yanked out of their hands. Yeah, who who might be using the phone with Square to uh, panhandle right at this very minute? That's how Probably. they get them. Full circle. Yeah, that's how. If only I would have set up Square to go to my account on that phone first. <laughs> yeah. um, a few more numbers in this report: uh, fifteen point four three million iPads, which is a record. Five point two million Macs, which is a record. Fifteen point four million iPods, but not a record. Um, and this is not a record, uh, but if you consider that they're selling iPods and iPhones, and most people have iPhones, they're just like, I don't need an iPod anymore. That's a pretty impressive number to pull off when there's, you're selling a product that competes with that product. Uh, and their net quarterly profit was $13.6 billion. One, one item was, are you worried about iPads cannibalizing uh, Mac sales? They say, no, but we see that as cannibalizing PC sales. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, their market cap is well past $400 billion, which means Apple currently has... Ninety-seven point six billion dollars in cash. Jeez, 
in cash. There was a figure about they could they could pay off the debts of a list of countries, including I think like Bulgaria and uh, Lithuania. Uh, that was reported at one one point. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Um, but yeah. I don't know. I guess it's insane. Uh, I, I, you know what. <laughs> That they're just insane numbers, and 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 we were worried about oh, the the max were up like twenty three percent. There, and there was like also talk that they are they may be the number one PC manufacturer if you count them as PCs. Mm-hmm. And so. in uh, I mean I hate to be uh, given the Apple reach around this week, but um, I also have this fancy little infographic that I got from a Simco, uh, which shows um, five year average of R and D over sales and percentage. Mm-hmm. So, for instance, you have uh, like 13.8% of Microsoft's money going into R&D over the last um, uh, five years mm-hmm. and uh, not a whole lot of profit. And you compare that to Apple, who has put 2.8% of their total income into R&D over the last five years. Yeah, because well, they they have they have their their uh, top secret laboratory. Uh, Microsoft has like whole buildings dedicated to this stuff and stuff. Yeah. We, we, you know, we, I don't know if you saw the videos they have on the Verge where they sent Josh Topolsky up through there, and this is all just like concept stuff uh, yeah. that you won't see in probably a few like the next ten years. It wouldn't be. It, it's not. Pl- it's not feasible. It really isn't. Right. Uh, versus, you know, uh, probably the furthest out you saw anything in, in Apple from, you know, what I can judge from reading the book is like, I think they had a version of the iPad about 2005. You know what I mean? Right. Because they, they worked on that before they worked on the iPhone, technically. I um, just uh, sent you a DM with a link to the thing because I'm not in the chat room. Okay. All right. I'll bring it up here. Um, but yeah, the, the overall uh, idea of this article is that you cannot buy innovation. Because Microsoft is trying really hard to buy innovation, and it's not really working out. Yeah, and Apple is not, and and also, I mean, Dell is at one point one percent. They're not putting a lot of money into R and D, but they also haven't exactly well, innovated in the last. Yeah, five what years. does Dell innovate? De- Dell. Well, you know, they had that Dell streak. The Dell streak. There you go. There you go. I mean, last I knew, they sell they sell their own versions of PCs. They bought Alienware, and uh, they sell Xboxes for some reason. Yeah, through their website. Yeah. Uh, and you also have, I mean, below that is Acer, who put 0.1% of their income <laughs> into R&D. <laughs> but also, this? you know what Acer sells a whole lot of? Stupid, really crappy little netbooks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, or the uh, Lenovo with their Transformer Prime. They're doing a little bit more with it, at least. You know, Was it Lenovo that did that, or Asus, or something? Yeah. So, uh, hey, uh, Norm's got to get out of here. So uh, we should probably go ahead and wrap it up, anyways. So sorry to call you out there, Norm. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you could, uh, or you could just have me leave, and then you can talk behind my back for the rest of the time. That sounds like a good plan. Like you're over <laughs> at iTwixy.com, keeping an eye on the youth of America. I am. I have so many little sisters over there. I can't even count them all. <laughs> <laughs> So, anything else going on with you you want to plug here? No, like I said, we're working on evening with PodCamp uh, mm-hmm. coming up, and uh, we're we're we've we've started our initial conversations of uh, hey, what about PodCamp this year? So, uh, so we'll probably have more of that coming up soon. But uh, other than that, I'm just uh, my God, PodCamp. I can't seven. believe January is over. Honestly, I'm like, it's February. What? <sighs> yeah, and it feels so. like April. It does, which is, this is going to be a really interesting year. Yeah. It'll probably snow in July. We'll probably have fall in, you know, March. So, who knows? Hey, if it snows in July, I got a Santa suit now. So, we can throw Chachi out with that. If, Sweet. Uh, do Sweet. some stuff. So, uh, thanks, Norm. Uh, at Mr. Derby on Twitter. Thanks for joining us this week. Yeah, anytime. So, um, hey, we might as well wrap it up. That's probably a good point there. Uh, Rob, did you have anything else on that? Uh, anything else on what, on wrapping up? No, <laughs> on your story <laughs> before I, I cut you off there. Uh, no, no, not at all. Put the link in the show notes, I guess. Excellent. Uh, Sean, thanks for, uh, uh joining us. Uh, let everybody know where they can, uh, uh, you know, check out your stuff and anything else coming up with you. Well, first I'm going to, uh, apply to the, uh, Apple store to get that, uh, sweet discount on some, uh, some, uh, Apple paraphernalia. But um, you can find me at SeanGram.me is my website or on Twitter at SeanGram. Mm-hmm. And uh, you're pretty active over on the Google Pluses. Yeah, not as much as I should be. I, I do it periodically, but, uh, you know, it's uh, I, I'll, I've been known to make an appearance every once in a while. So, um, 
But uh, but yeah, I'm over there too. Yeah, I've been kind of forgetting about myself uh, the last few weeks here. It's kind of, it's kind of hard to juggle all of them, you know. Uh, yep. Yep. So, um, and Rob, what's up yep. with you? Is there anything you can talk about? Is there anything <laughs> at all that isn't top secret you can tell me about, sir? Um. <laughs> Uh man, I I put you, out so many amazing. Have you circled tech- yourself with monitors again? Today, not yet. And were Me, there any I'm, side effects? <clears throat> uh, the best time to visit my studio will be in April. Uh, that okay. is assuming that all of these jobs come back in one piece, because I will have a twenty-four foot wide, sixteen foot tall video wall. My God, my you God. should do you should do a live awesome cast from your studio. That that day or whatever time, sometime in April. <laughs> okay. That's it. We haven't done like a, a other location awesome cast for a long time, no other than pod camp. So maybe. yeah, when uh, when I get this thing all taken care of, um, it'll we <laughs> we like we keep having these little flashes of when we won't be busy because we will like I will literally be spending twelve to fifteen hours a day in the studio every day, including the weekends from here until the beginning of March and then I get to travel for three weeks straight. Jeez. Um, and then, uh, so we, we have these happy little glimpses of what April is going to be like. And so like our biggest concerns are like, Hey, I wonder if we can figure out how to split the signal from a Wii <laughs> across 12 different displays and have the biggest game of Wii bowling ever. <laughs> That's awesome cast. Love it. You can have your coworkers playing in the background, and we could be recording awesome cast in the front. That that would be amazing. I think. Yeah, it'd be pretty great. Every <laughs> every senior center in America would be envious. <laughs> awesome. We should have like an awesome gadget porn show with you. Um, wow. Well, and uh, hey, and uh, we got a bunch of stuff going on over at SorgatronMedia dot com, uh, including if you're into wrestling DVDs, we're selling those now. That's a new turn. Um, and everything else going on there. A new episode of Unsung this week, of course, uh, has gone up. And uh, the Chatterbox, the Wrestling Mayhem Show, all that stuff. And, of course, oh, hey, guess what we almost forgot to mention, guys? Uh, Chachi Plays. Chachi Plays is, uh, well, at this point, about a week and a half away. Uh, they are at uh, 2530, according to the site. But I feel like it's a little higher because I don't think all of this stuff from our... Uh, our Royal Rumble pool are in there yet. So, uh, goals $3,000. Chachi's going to be uh, playing for 24 hours straight. And there's still a few spots in there on the schedule. If you want to donate $50 and play along with Chachi, um, there's there's a lot going on there. I don't know if the Tetris tournament is full yet. Uh, but the, there's a few. Wow, there's not as many spots as I thought there was. This is amazing. There's people going to 3 in the morning now. There's like 3 hours in the middle of the morning that aren't filled yet wow uh two hours in the morning and uh this is of course next friday and saturday the 10th and 11th uh benefits the toon zm and father ryan arts center uh to do some uh scholarships for underprivileged teens uh for art scholarships so go check that out it's for the kids it's a lot of fun shashiplays.com we will be streaming it live on the internet uh so you can join us if you're not able to join us downtown pittsburgh uh as well and uh hit that donate button and help us out so uh with that and also hey awesomecast.com we're here every tuesday 7 p.m eastern live.sorgatronmedia.com or live.awesomecast.com contact at awesomecast.com 724258cast at awesomecast on twitter we're on the google plus we're on the facebook leave any comments about this show or anything else you want to talk about uh i'm sore and uh thank you our awesome chat room We've been hopping all night You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. up a big fat text edit window and I made it nice and big and I put it to size like 144 font. My coworker's name is Marcus and I and I made it say Marcus is a big fat duty face. <laughs> there you go. This is my shining achievement for the night. It's uh three fifty five inches inch monitors wide.
and it just in big bold letters, Marcus is a big fat duty face. I'm so putting that. 